Hi. I'd like to do a series now on God's calling to the laity in today's church. What we have in today's church, as you well know, is a lot of darkness, a lot of evidence that the devil has infiltrated our church. You know, he's infiltrated it through heresies that are being preached from pulpits. He's infiltrated by uh, clergy who are abusing, uh, sexually molesting minors. Um, we have found out that there have been clergy in the seminaries who have been um, abusing seminarians and 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 promoting through that and increasing in that the the homosexual lifestyle the homosexual activities and th there's there's many other ways I've shared in in previous episodes of my podcast footsteps to heaven uh, some of the the things that have been going on and and now I would like to talk about what God is doing about this in Matthew 25, we see that Jesus it talks about the separating of the sheep from the goats. And I believe that's what is happening now. I believe that's what God is doing. It's a time of, of making clear who is the wolf and who is the shepherd. You know, who's who's the, 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 the wolf in shepherd's clothing? You know, and who are the wolves that have been the devil's instruments bringing darkness bringing evil bringing sin increasing sin and promoting sin in the church and and trying to destroy the church from within i mean that's the devil's plan to destroy the church from within to drive people away from christ by driving people away from the church but god is bigger than that that's the good news that we need to remember God has a plan. Jesus is still on the throne. And, you know, in Matthew 25, when Jesus separates the sheep from the goat, you know what's going on there, right? You know, that's, that we're all very familiar with that scripture. Uh, I do invite you to go ahead and read that sometime in detail. But in short, in brief, it's where the goats are those who do not serve the, the least of these, who do not serve Jesus by helping the vulnerable by helping people who need God's help you know because God works through us God works through the people yes he could work directly you know like a lightning bolt you know hitting earth he could do something directly himself but he chooses he prefers to work through the body of Christ on earth which are the believers it's the the church on earth and we are all part of that. The sheep are those who do, you know, who are God's hands and feet helping others in this world. And I believe God is separating the sheep from the goats, making it clear who are sheep and goats. I also believe, you know, it, in what Scripture says in Matthew, um, Matthew 13, I'm going to read from that now, it's where... Jesus talks about pulling the weeds out of the wheat. In Matthew 13, starting with uh, verse 24, he says, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. While everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed seeds all through the wheat. Sowed weeds all through the wheat. Now, Think about that, you know, while everyone was asleep. When have we been asleep? I'm going to talk about that later. Stay tuned. How have we been sleeping? I'm gonna that's what I'm gonna answer. While everyone was asleep, the enemy came and sowed weeds through the wheat and then went off. When the crop grew and bore fruit, the weeds appeared as well, of course. The slaves, <clears throat> the slaves of the householder came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where have the weeds come from? You know, aren't we asking that question now? How did all this 
corruption get into our church? How did all this sin and sinful activities uh, become so 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 prevalent within our church and so pervasive? And you know, that we're all being disturbed by the fact that things are coming to light now about just how bad it's really been, and we're shocked by it, and and we're wondering how this you know how how have these people bishops and priests you know and and others gotten away for so long with what they've gotten away with you know and you know who's been hiding this stuff and and these are legitimate questions but that's you know that's part of what's been going on with the sleeping that i mentioned but like i said i'll go into that more in a little bit and uh so in verse 28 jesus continues an enemy is you know he's quoting what the the master is saying to the servants an enemy has done this we know who the enemy is the devil has infiltrated the church but god is still in charge jesus is still on the throne getting back to the scripture his slave said to him do you want us to go and pull up the weeds the master replied, no, if you pull up the weeds, you might uproot the wheat along with them. Let them grow together until harvest. Then at harvest time, I will say to the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles for burning, but gather the wheat into the barn. You see what, what Jesus is talking about here is how the, the master said, you know, if you pull the weeds out, some of the wheat is going to come too. We have been seeing this. We've been witnessing this. There have been who the wheat that gets pulled out accidentally along with the weeds. You know, I believe that we've reached the part, the time when Jesus was talking about where God has begun doing harvesting. And some of the, uh, the weed pulling is causing some of the wheat to get yanked out before it's time, before it's really harvest time, before the wheat has fully matured. This, these are the people who are leaving the church. These are the people who have lost faith because of the evil that the devil has been allowed to get away with in the church. But as I'm saying, God has a plan and it's coming to be harvest time now where we are beginning to witness the weed pulling but what how do we rescue the 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 wheat if it's not ready to be pulled in if it's not mature enough to be pulled yet what do we do about that and and even if it is fully grown but you know is in danger of getting yanked out and 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 not getting into the barn of, of the master, which is heaven. Um, you know, if, if the weed pulling is causing damage to people, good people, the wheat, the sheep of the church, if the pulling out of the weeds is doing damage, what is God's plan? That's what this series is all about. I believe that God's plan involves you and me. And it involves what what I see now as a time of raising up the laity, the lay faithful to a very very important mission. More important than we've witnessed in our lives, okay? Let's go into this. We have been seeking in our popes strong, clear leadership. We've been relying on that. God has given us a pope now that doesn't give us that clarity. And you know, the Holy Spirit was involved in the election of Pope Francis. And as frustrating as it is that he is, he's, he, He's too ambiguous with some of his statements, and he says things that we wonder, where is he coming from on that? What is he really teaching? And we're begging him to, to be clear about it and to, to clarify and to speak the truth and teach the truth, and we're not getting it. We are used to having, we, in, in our own recent history, ever since Vatican Council II, 
we've had some, and, and not just ever since, we've had other really good popes too, but I really want to focus now on the popes that God has raised up since Vatican Council II. We've had a wonderful saint in Pope John Paul II. He was a fantastic communicator. He gave us many writings, encyclicals, letters that make very clear what the teachings of the church are on various topics and all of it, how it's based on scripture. He, he was a, a great communicator. And then we had Pope Benedict who carried that forth. I mean, he, he was a bit more intellectual in his writings, but he still gave us some really good writings to learn from. Think about this question. Who do you want to learn from? Who is the you know, the guiding force in your life. Are you wanting Pope Francis to be that guiding force in your life? I'm saying that's not what God wants for you, or for me, or for anyone. God wants himself to be the guiding force in our lives. When you've got a decision to make, who is the best person to go to for guidance? Someone who knows you well, right? Also, someone who knows and totally understands the circumstances. And, best of all, someone who even knows your future. And what's the best way to get to the best future? Only God knows that. God wants us to put Him first. And I believe what has happened is that we have put onto pedestals our clergy. We have put our popes onto pedestals. And we are looking to them to be the shepherd that they're called to be. But in so doing, we are we, we're putting them on pedestals instead of keeping them on the ground with us, in partnership with us, because we are all in the same church. We are all in the same mission. And priests are not supposed to be on any pedestal. God says, put me first. It's the first commandment. Put no other gods before me. And frankly, I believe that we, the lay people, have put clergy on pedestals, which is a form of idolatry. It's a form of relying on them instead of having a good, strong, personal relationship with the Holy Spirit so that we can hear the Holy Spirit helping us. The Holy Spirit has given us good, solid writings to learn from, good, solid teachings of the church, the scriptures, the, the writings of the church for over 2,000 years passed down to us and, and more and more being written since the first apostles. We have the Catechism of the Catholic Church that was, that was written, uh, put together you know, a couple of decades ago. And we have a wealth of information available to us on what Scripture is speaking to us about, what the Holy Spirit is saying to us in Scripture, and how to live that out. The church documents are how to live out the scriptures. And this is how the Holy Spirit is providing his guidance to us. We have some catching up to do, my friend. We have been relying too heavily on the voice of the Pope and the voices of our bishops and the voices of our clergy to to tell us what we we want to learn to tell us what we think we want to learn to tell us what god wants us to learn you know we go to mass and get a 10 minute homily maybe if we're lucky some would say if we're cursed we get a 20 minute homily this is God helping us to learn, but that can't be enough. 
that's never enough. And so when when the Pope Pope Francis makes a statement that we're not clear, is he really saying what it sounds like he's saying? Is he making a compromise of church teachings so that the world finds it more acceptable? And we know that's not right. We know that the Pope needs to be clear as the top shepherd on what the teachings of the truth really are. And when he's not clear, I believe that's happening at this time in history for a reason. A divine reason that God set forth. The reason is God wants us to stop putting our popes and our priests and our deacons onto pedestals, but to do some catching up and learn. Whatever you feel the Pope is unclear about, find out for yourself what Scripture says about it. Find out for yourself what the Catechism of the Catholic Church says about it. Find out for yourself what the teachings in various documents say about it. To that end, I am going to be doing this series on this document called the Decree on the Apostolate of the Laity. This was promulgated by Pope Saint Paul VI, promulgated this, and it's a valuable piece of work that the Holy Spirit inspired. And how many of us know what it says? How many of us know what our calling as laity really is and how important that calling is. How many of us have been taught this by our clergy? How many of this have been taught this by our bishops? This was written by our bishops, the bishops that we had back at the time of Vatican Council II. And I'm going to share this with you because this is, like all other church documents, a wealth of help, and guidance and it is God's calling for us today more than it was when it was first written for example starting with the very first paragraph the introduction the bishops of Vatican Council II said to intensify the apostolic activity of the people of God, the Most Holy Synod earnestly addresses itself to the laity, whose proper and indispensable role in the mission of Christ has already been dealt with in other documents. Are you listening to this? The apostolate of the laity. If you are a layperson, you're, you have an apostolate. You are an apostle, lowercase a, you are an apostle, and you derive your Christian vocation from your apostolate. And this document explains what your apostolate is, and I am going to unpack that over the next few episodes. And the, voca the church can never be without it. That's how important you and I are. Sacred scripture clearly shows, this document says, clearly shows how spontaneous and fruitful such activity was at the very beginning of the church. And then it gives us scriptures to refer to because every church document is based on scripture. And it continues, our own times require of the laity no less zeal. Read the book of Acts. Look at how how full of zeal the first Christians were. And at the time this was written, back in the 1960s, our own times required the laity no less zeal. And where are we today? We need this zeal more than ever. The, the document says, in fact, modern conditions demand that their apostolate, the laity's apostolate, be broadened and intensified. And that has continued to this day. I see it as we need this more than ever. This was a prophetic document. 
And now the times have become critical, crucial for us to do what we are called to do. A little bit further down, still in the introduction, besides in many places where priests are very few or in some instances deprived of due freedom for priestly work, the church could scarcely exist and function without the activity of the laity. The Holy Spirit, in making the laity ever more conscious of their own responsibility, the Holy Spirit is trying to make you, my friend, conscious of your responsibility. Each one of us, getting back to quoting this, the Holy Spirit in making the lady ever more conscious of their own responsibility and encouraging them. The Holy Spirit is encouraging you, my friend, to serve Christ and the church in all circumstances. This is what the Holy Spirit is calling us to do now. The Holy Spirit is saying, stop relying on your clergy. The clergy are called to teach us what is in church documents. Teach us what is in scripture. Teach us what the church magisterium has, has protected as the deposit of faith for over 2,000 years. We have clergy that are, unfortunately, I'm going to be very frank about this, because this is part of how the devil has gotten into the church, and we need to be honest about it. We need to speak up about it. Clergy have been afraid to speak up the truth. In today's world, and, and I'm talking about, you know, the, the past few decades, the culture has become more and more anti-Christian, more and more breaking away from Christian values. And clergy have been afraid to teach the truth, the uncomfortable truth, to people at Mass during homily time, which is very often the only time, for the most part, I mean, not more than very often, it is usually like 99%, the only time when the clergy have access to teach the people. And so often, the clergy have been afraid that people are going to get up and walk out of Mass. People are not going to return to Mass if they teach what is truly in Scripture for today's world, for, for the culture that we live in, teaching us how to be countercultural, teaching us what the truth is, teaching us the truth about how abortion is killing a human being and killing any human being is wrong, teaching the truth about how homosexual activity is not God's plan for marriage. You know, and God's plan for marriage has always been, and the scriptures are full of it, and our Catholic teachings are full of it, has always been between one man and one woman for life in a commitment that reflects God's commitment to us. Faithfulness between husband and, and, and wife are God's, it's a reflection of God's faithfulness to the people. And that's how important the vocation of marriage is. But when was the last time you heard this preached during a homily? You know, we have so much wealth of truth that people are not hearing from the clergy because it's an uncomfortable truth and more so as time goes on. As the devil has a greater and greater impact on what the people out there in society believe. The priests are afraid to speak up in their homily time because they're afraid of driving people away. But guess what? People are not kept in the church by hiding the truth. People's faith do not grow by hiding the truth. We don't keep people faithful by hiding the truth. By just speaking things that sound nice to the ears and, and are comfortable to hear. 
you know, if there's no challenge, there's no growth. And this is a big part of the reason, and there are many factors, many other reasons that have all contributed to why there are, are more and more people who have no faith in our society, there are more and more people who are not going to church, there are more and more people who don't have a personal relationship with Christ. And, you know, there are many factors, but one of the reasons why people are not drawn to church the way they used to be is because the truth is not being spoken, not being preached boldly. Where it is, in parts of the world where it is being preached boldly, people are gravitating to the church. People recognize that we need to be challenged and the Holy Spirit works with that in us. The Holy Spirit can say to, to people, hey, you need to hear this difficult truth. But, and, and, and they have to wrestle with that. And some people don't take up the invitation, but some do, many do. But the Holy Spirit, he can't work with the lukewarm, the, the, the mediocre faith. He can't work with the idea of, Oh, isn't that a nice homily? The priest told stories from his life. He told jokes. He, you know, he, um, he said some very nice things there. Okay, now what am I going to have for dinner when I go home? What are my activities going to be the rest of the day? You know, the Holy Spirit can't change lives with that. But when the, the truth is spoken boldly, the, the people hear the Holy Spirit within them, challenging them, stirring them up to accept the truth, to be changed by the truth. This is a truth that we all need to latch on to. We all have people in our lives who have left the church or who have no faith, never, never had church experience. And how do we evangelize them as lay people? How do we evangelize them? You know, if there are clergy listening to this, you know, you too have people in your families, friendships, people outside of your parish, your your zone of influence, you know, who are in need of the truth. We all know people who need the truth and are not embracing the truth because the world, the devil has convinced them that this truth is not something that they want to live with. The, tr the devil has confused them about what the truth really is. And our role, our apostolate, is to explain the truth in a way that convicts people to change their lives. That means with compassion. That means with love. That means with boldness. The boldness that comes from love, that comes from caring so much about people that we want them to know the truth. But it also requires us knowing what the truth is very clearly. And in upcoming episodes, I'm going to share what the truth in this document, the decree of the Apostle of the Laity, is telling us about how we are called and can because we're called, make a difference in the church and in the world. So stay tuned. And meanwhile, pray this prayer with me. Come Holy Spirit, fill me. Come Holy Spirit, help me to know the truth. Come Holy Spirit, renew me in your truth. Fill me with the fire of your passion to make a difference with your truth. Come, Holy Spirit, you have my permission to change me. Amen. God bless you.